Evening everyone, today I'm going to tie a, a, a pike fly and I'm going to use a, a bundle of different cool materials. Um, this is going to be a fairly easy pike fly. Uh, we're going to do one or two techniques that requires a bit of, uh, of experience, but that's about it. Um, this is going to be uh, uh, something in, in a grey nuance. So we're going to use, of course, a lot of different flash materials. Some. Uh, some uh, some grizzly feathers, some bucktail, and and some other stuff. All of this is is going to be displayed further on. So first of all, I'm going to take a bundle of uh, of uh, bucktail. Just trim all the the short hairs out here, because those we don't need. I'm just going to brush these out, see like this. So they're going to be completely gone. Uh, why we need the bucktail is because uh, we want uh, the bucktail to be kind of like a supporting, make a supporting layer for the rest of the materials. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the bucktail here. And uh, as you can see, I've made quite a solid uh, base of, of tying thread for, uh, for, for me to ensure that the bucktail is going to stay exactly where I want it to be. Like so. Tie this down while applying some pressure here. Like that. Just gonna let all these uh, these small uh, uh, stickers here. Just gonna leave them be. Then I'm gonna take all this cocktail here and uh, ensure that it's pointing backwards. Um, and then I'm just going to tie in front of it. I'm not going to tie on top of it again. I'm just going to tie in front of it uh, to force it backwards, but not to uh, to completely uh, to completely destroy the effect that, that that it has now. Now it's kind of like this corona thing, which makes uh, makes this fly really really pop out. Um, and what you can do, and and uh, what I I do uh, sometimes is to just add a small bundle here. Small bundle here, more in, in, in one of the sides. Uh, this will, will make your fly uh, swim uh, uh, very erratic in the water. I'm not gonna do it on this one. Well, next up, we're gonna take uh, uh, some of this very very cool new big fly fiber. Uh, this is uh, this is a grayish white one with with uh, some uh, some flesh in it uh, already. A uh, very nice color. Um, and I'm gonna take a bundle of, of this big fly fiber. And this is going to be kind of like the 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 the, the really important uh, base element of uh, of this fly. So I'm just going to make a very sound, very good um, stretch of uh, of uh, of tying thread here to ensure that my my big fly fiber is is going to stay where I want it to be. Just taking some of these bucktail here and just forcing it a bit to the sides, so there will be room for my uh, for my big fly fiber. Like that. Making sure my big fly fiber is, is nice and firm. It's tied down and and is secure. Just to be sure that uh, this bucktail have the uh, the effect that I'm going for, I'm going to take another bundle here. I'm going to take another bundle here of uh, of uh, bucktail to do exactly the same as, as I did with the first bundle, like this. I'm going to take all the small small uh, hairs out that I don't need. I'm not sure what happened there, but well, the effect was that my tank thread broke for some strange reason. I can't explain why. Well, that's easily fixed. Like that. And I'm going to do exactly the same as I did before. Take this bucktail, tie it down here, fasten it using force and some amount of thread then I'm going to turn it over and actually what you can do is you can use the middle part of a, of, of a pin uh, 
that is uh, works nicely for uh, for doing this. Like that. Again, tying all the way towards the uh, all the way towards the uh, the bucktail to ensure that it is placed where exactly I want it to be. Like that. I'm gonna take a small bundle of big fly fiber again. These new colors of big fly fiber is awesome. The two tone stuff is just well <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I really, really adore those colors. And I do mean adore. <laughs> like this. Nice profile fly now, uh, with a lot of with a lot of bulk to it. Then I'm gonna take some holographic flash of blue and silver, which is just gonna go nicely, work nicely on this fly. Um, as always, I. Uh, Draw out these uh, these ends, so I'm sh so I'm sure that uh, that nothing is of uh, of equal length. This will make the fly swim a lot better, and and the effect of the flash very very much more vivid. If you hear someone coughing in the background, I'm I'm sorry about that. That's just my well, my son. <laughs> he's uh, he's not sick, but uh, well, you know how it is with kids. If you have any. Nice effect going, and uh, to top that off with something uh, more cool, I'm gonna add a lot of these uh, uh, this um, lateral scales, uh, a very thick flash uh, uh, that looks awesome on the fly and uh, and really really uh, imitates the uh, the uh, oh, what's it called the sidelines of the fish very well. I'm going to take some of these and just distribute them evenly throughout uh, at the top of the fly here, like so. Like that, and um, then we're going to do one more thing. We're going to make a, a dubbing loop, and in this dubbing loop, we're going to have a kind of like a hackle. This hackle is going to be composed of uh, consists of uh, uh, a relatively new material that's called microlon, a nice thin light fiber that <laughs> really is amazing in the water, and then the res red holographic flash blue to kind of like give this fly a, you could say, a, a bleeding effect or something like that. Um, just ha have these uh, these sprinkled these uh, these red red flash filaments in there. Trust me, it's going to look awesome in a second. Uh, there is my dog reel. So I'm taking the uh, the uh, microlon, and then I'm taking a fairly large bundle of, of red uh, holographic flash blue. Again, I'm gonna make sure that the uh, the lengths of this is is uneven. I'm gonna do the same thing for the microlon. And then I'm gonna try to blend these two materials, intertwine them. 
That is a bit tricky, but well, sometimes you can just do something like this. There you can see I managed to uh, spice it up a bit, yeah, like so. Gonna put this inside my dubbing loop here, making sure again that one of one of the uh, one of the uh, the parts that are hanging out is a bit longer than the other one. Again to uh, to ensure that uh, that this will move uh, correctly in the water. Um, and as you can see now, my my dubbing loop I have maybe used it on uh, on something like this in length, maybe a bit more than that, not much more, a bit more maybe. And here it is again. If you want this dubbing uh, loop to succeed and uh, to make this flash slash uh, flash slash uh, micro lawn uh, micro lawn hackle, uh, you need you need a solid tying thread uh, to ensure. That uh, that your dubbing loop will uh, will in fact succeed. And then what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna help this a little along the way here to make sure everything is uh, is nicely interwoven. And as you can see, I get this gray red hackle now. <laughs> that is maybe 10 inches long and it's gonna look absolutely bloody awesome on the fly to do hackles like this with uh, with materials with flash and with the uh, with the uh, uh, synthetic materials is well one of the tricks I enjoy a lot and, and use a lot because uh, the flies you can make uh, by using using this is is astonishing really um, and and the effect in the water is is also great. I'm sorry about the coughing. The coughing. I think maybe I should check on him in a minute. So it's, <laughs> that's just how life is, I guess, <laughs> with kids and stuff like that. But if you have a kid, you definitely will, will <laughs> know how that is. Um, so I'm going to take a lot of saliva here to make sure that my, that my hackle here, that my dubbing loop here, uh, that the, the fibers in there is going to stick exactly where I want them to be, like so. Then I'm going to start turning. Okay, one more turn and then, I'm sorry, I have to take a break to just check on uh, on Carl. Oh, I think my wife is up. She did it. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> sorry to have to... What I want to do now is, is we have two parts left. Actually, if, if you like, the fly could... Uh, could easily easily be done now this will work very very great but uh, <laughs> hang on for a while because I'm gonna show you a, a, a trick or two yet to come so um, now I'm gonna take uh, uh, to add some uh, some additional effect I'm gonna take some uh, some grizzly saddle fibers saddle hackles here uh, and these look absolutely stunning on a fly like this so I'm gonna take four of these and these I'm going to tie in individually to, to make sure that they are going to be placed exactly where I want them to be. Just 
just gonna pull everything a bit back here like that. That's one feather. Two feathers. Unfortunately, these feathers are a bit expensive and a bit hard to come by because they look truly, truly, they, they, they add uh, finesse and, uh, finesse and, uh, and uh, well, class, I would say, class to the feather. Kind of like a jungle cock feather adds, adds class to, uh, to a salmon, to a salmon pattern. Then these, uh, these grizzly hackles here adds potency, potency to the to the pattern. So I'm gonna make sure these are probably fastened. I use these uh, these saddle feathers a lot. I uh, I really really like them. And uh, they are probably by far the most expensive part of, of a fly like this. So if you want to cut something off uh, in order to save save some bucks, then uh, then that is where you should you should you should do that. Um, uh, then finally, I'm gonna take a marabou hackle. I'm gonna take a marabou feather here. Tie this in right there. And I'm going to turn that. If you have a grey one, you can use that. But the red is is, is nice. It's going to add to the to the bleeding effect of this fly. bode well for tomorrow that cough it does not bode well making sure everything is nice and tight before I chop off the marabou feather And again, here you can finish the fly and be content once again, because this pattern is going to be a killer regardless of what you do, uh, of you do what I of what I'm going to do next. Um, there is on the market a lot of different cool uh, uh, cool uh, head uh, materials for for flies, and one of these uh, one of these is uh, is the Pro soft head, a head that I'm very fond of and, and I use a lot. And I'm going to take one of these and apply this to, to this pattern also. This is a million times more easy than using a, than using a glued head. And as you can see, it looks, uh, looks fairly good on, on flies like this. So it's just to attach this, uh, this plastic head and uh, well, you're sold, you're golden, you're good to go. Um, and of course, we need to do one more thing. We need to get some eyes on there, so I'm taking my super glue, just dropping a small amount of glue uh, into the groove. And there is a small dentation inside this head uh, from the, from the uh, from when straight out of the package, where where you uh, where you can you can place your 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 three D eyes like that. I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. And now, <laughs> now you're done. If you're tying uh, directly on uh, on uh, on the hook here, uh, then you should not uh, use a, a head that's larger than uh, size large. If you're tying on, let's say, uh, let's say a shank or, or a tube, you can you can move up in, in size. But the largest is great for this 4.0 um, 
uh, Universal Predator. A nice, nice hook. I used a lot. Well, there it is. We could call this. Uh, we could call this the. Uh, well, it kind of like looks like a roach. So why not just name it the Bleeding Roach? I have this this pattern in in a popper version as well. That works very very great. Well, uh, remember to subscribe, uh, <laughs> of course, and uh, well, those were the words. Thank you for uh, for joining.